match. But, but Craig, I'm kind of like you. I like the fact of being able to be at the commencement of a new year. And you know what? We're probably looking at our calendars and we're trying to schedule. I'm already trying to do that again and schedule plan. But I said this on Sunday morning. And I want to say it again. The Word of God in Psalms 139, when, when David wrote and he said, God, you, 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 uh, your eyes can see my substance yet being unperfect. And in your book, all my members were written, uh, which in continuance were fashioned, as yet there was none of them. I read an article where a man said that you can take this and you can biblically clarify and say, and God, you scheduled all the days of my life before I even began to breathe. You know, we look at, some. someone said to me today, an older person said to me, they said, I can't believe we're saying 2018 because we were just saying uh, the year 2000. It seems like yesterday. Time does fly, doesn't it? And uh, we are busy occupying. We, we have to work jobs. God has provided them for us. It's our means of providing for a family. It's our means of a marketplace to go and, and to, to live uh, the, the word of God, to go and show the world what it's like, to be washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, to have that assurance, Christina, that if we die, that we will fly away uh, to a better place. And, and so, but, but God, he already scheduled all of our days. Now, I don't know, one of us may not be here in 2019. Uh, none of us may be. The Lord may come back. The signs of the time, they're, they're appearing all around us. You know, it's, it's troubling when you look at the news, but you got to know that God's in all of that. But the Word of God, He has every one of our days scheduled. So we're thinking, tomorrow i got to get up and i got to go to work. i, I got to be there at this time and I'll get off at this time. And when I get home, I need to do this. But the Word of God says that God has our days scheduled. Are we allowing God in the middle of our schedule? Or is it what we've already scheduled for ourselves? And then if there's any leftovers, then we'll give them to God. God help us that He schedules all of our days and all of our events as we prayerfully plan. Turn with me to the book of Job. I want to look at it as if I, I think I've never looked this way before, at least not in this light. In the book of Job, and I'll start reading verse number 6 of chapter number 1. I want you to remember that this book of Job is the first book that is penned. And I need to apologize because I've said before when we look at this book that we look at why is there suffering and uh, what is hardship. And I believe that that's part of it, but I, 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 I look back and feel that I missed probably the greatest thing about the book of Job. So tonight I don't want to miss that, but I want to share it with you. That as this book was being penned from heaven, as the very first book chronologically that's written, written before Genesis, um, it's penned, and God is relating something to us from heaven that is so very, very important. And I believe it's the greatest thing that you and I can embrace in our life as a believer. And I'll tell you in a little bit, I'm not going to tell you right now. It's the greatest thing that we can embrace as a believer. And I believe it's what we need to grab hold of right here in the beginning of 2018. And so the Bible says in verse number 6, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan come among them. And so here are angels, but there's also fallen angels that are, that, 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 that are there. Um, uh, Particularly when we see that Satan was among them. And so Satan comes as uh, these, uh, the sons of God, come to present themselves to the Lord. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Where have you been? <coughs> Do you think God already knew where Satan was? Absolutely. He already knew where he was. So he knew what the context of what Satan was even going to bring up to him was about. 
And Satan answered the Lord, and he said, from going to and fro uh, 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 in the earth and walking up and down in it. Now, I, I want you to realize that it wasn't Satan that brought up this righteous man named Job, but it's God who brings him up. The Bible says, and the Lord said unto Satan, Have you considered my servant Job, that there is none like him uh, in, in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one who fears God, and he excused evil? And Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for naught? And he put a hedge about him. Going back to what, what God speaks to Satan about Job, is very remarkable to me. In fact, I believe that it's, 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 it's so profound that it's greater than anything, Brother Justin, that is mentioned here about Job and his difficulties and his attack against the enemy and his suffering in his life. There is something that is greater that is to be said that is found in this book and it is first penned and it's, very, it's in the very beginning as God writes to man, I gives the Word of God, the very Spirit, Spirit of God breathes the written word of God to man. He said, have you considered my servant Job that there is no one like him? You know what God was saying from the very beginning? Grab hold of this. And if you go away with anything tonight, I want you to know this. That here was a man who lived his life in such a way. It was in an intentional way. If we're going to do anything in this next year, it's not going to be because a pot of gold pops up in our backyard. It's not going to be because uh, we get the luck of the draw. It's going to be because we've been intentional to do something. If you're going to be intentional, this is a month of great big promises that are broken. And there's lots of gym memberships that will be canceled. There's lots of diet books that will sit on the shelf and go to a yard sale and go to Goodwill. Maybe even be thrown in the trash. Uh, Walmart, Brother Justin, you're off this week, but I'm sure that they have all this diet food out. Everything to make you fit. They know there's going to be lots of resolutions to save money where people will fall back into bad habits. There's going to be lots of things. I'm not worried about those things. But what I'm worried about is this, is that we are intentional in our life to serve God. And this is the one thing that I see that Job did. He lived a, are you ready? Sanctified life. I believe that that is what we need to be intentional in doing in our life in 2018. It is living a sanctified life. Do you know when Job looked at his life, he saw that he was fearful of God. He may have went to church. You can go to church and never live a sanctified life. And you can read the Bible and never live a sanctified life. Until the work of the cross becomes of importance in your life and you allow the Spirit of God to sanctify you, amen, uh, and you will never grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Job could have measured himself up against other men and said, wow, I look really good. But you know when he spoke to God, he said to God, he said, God, I'm thou. Because he was comparing himself to the holiness of God. I believe that 2018 needs to be a year where we compare ourselves to the holiness of God and we are sacrificed. The message from the throne room of heaven, amen, wasn't all about why do people suffer and why do bad things happen to good people. The very message of Job is this, is that God wants and God honors and God's attention is given to those who live a sanctified life. The Lord said, Have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him in all the earth? A perfect and an upright man, one who fears God and is choosing. I don't know what the population was, Brother Justin. There were probably others who were Christians, but they didn't live the sanctified life that caught the attention 
of God Almighty. And he said, there is none that is like him. He was closer to God than anyone else. Listen, I'm not talking about living a sanctified life that we are on a lofty plateau. That's not sanctification. That's pride. And God hates the prideful spirit. But here's a man whose heart's desire was to be like God. We read later in the Word of God that he made sacrifices for his family. Do you know why? Because he was the high priest of his home. His desire was to be sanctified and for his family to be sanctified. My goal for this church in this year ahead, do I want to see us grow? Yes, I want to see us grow. Do I like seeing new faces? Yes, I like seeing new faces. But the greatest desire in my heart is to see this church be full of people who are sanctified. Who want to live the way that God wants them to live. Who doesn't put the marker compared to someone else, but lets their life be aligned to the holiness and the purity of God Almighty. Do you know what? When we begin to set the cross of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ as the center of our affection, amen, that is when we begin to live a sanctified life. The only way a sanctified life will come is when the work of the cross is at the center of our life. When we look at Jesus Christ and what He has done for us, amen, that He is the source of all blessings. Listen, it doesn't matter if you get a raise on your job this year. It doesn't matter if you get a promotion. It doesn't matter if you expand in any other earthly way. What really matters is when we allow the cross of Christ, amen, to be what brings the greatest blessings in our life. When we reach out to others in love, sharing the gospel, amen, that is sharper than any two-edged sword, amen, that it pierces deep inside of them, that we may plant the seed or we may be watering the seed, but we're believing earnestly that God will give the increase that we get into the Word of God, not just that we have a page read, or not just that we can mark it off of our little chart, but that the Word of God centers around the cross of Jesus Christ, and it becomes what we make as the standard of our life to live by. All blessings are given to the work of Christ upon the cross. Do you know that we should be worshiping a risen Savior who gave his life for ours every day of our life? Sometimes we worship God for blessings. Thank you for my job. Thank you for my help. Thank you for my car. Those are all good things. As you said, Sister Rachel, His mercies are new every day. Great is thy faithfulness. But the Lord of the cross is the greatest thing that He has done for us. And we need to every day know that that's where our greatest blessing comes from. We should love truth. Brother Eli, you said it tonight. Oh, brother, I want truth to be what prevails from this pulpit. <clears throat> we should serve God in truth. We should walk in the presence of God in truth. We should rejoice in truth, the Word of God says. We should meditate upon truth. As the servants of God, we should speak truth. We should teach truth. The Bible says that kings are preserved by truth. Do you know that evil people are destitute of truth? That they do not speak the truth? 
God help us to eschew evil and to seek the truth of His righteousness. That our lives may be sanctified. Truth is, is firm. Truth is immutable. Truth is eternal. Do you remember in the book of Daniel when Belshazzar he came face to face with God. He took the vessels of God and he did unpure with them. But truth came written on the wall. God help us to have truth written upon the walls of our heart. That we always do what's right before God. Truth. God, help us to be shaken by truth. Help us to put on the belt of truth. That we are armed as a soldier of God. Armed in truth. Tonight I want us to be challenged by 2018. Started out reading. I was amazed today. I just tried to take in the Word of God in the book of Genesis that when Adam and Eve fell, that God slayed animals with coats. You know, Brother Justin, what would it have been like to be an Adam in the Garden of Eden? Can you imagine? Brother Doug, he didn't know good and evil, he only knew the purity that God had surrounded him. The Bible says that they were naked and they weren't ashamed. They were robed in the presence of God. But because of the sin of man, he was tempted by the serpent. He made the decision, the serpent, that he'll crawl upon his belly for always. That's his curse. Man will work by the sweat of his brow. Women will have pain in childbirth. We know that that's all part of the curse. But God made a way of sanctification even in the beginning. He was showing us by the shedding of blood there's a coat to cover us. It was just a shadow of the shedding of blood that would be a coat to cover us. And the glory of God that was lost is now given back because of the Lord. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the cross. Thank God that's not just about salvation alone. Let's keep the going the cross at the center and live in a sanctified life that pleases God. Do you know what I want this year? Brother Doug, I want God to be able to say, hey, you can serve my servant. There's no one like him. <coughs> and you can serve my servant. God's strong. There's no one like him. And you can serve my servant just a little bit, that there's no one like him. The message from the very beginning <gasps> is that God wants to sanctify. And God honors those allow themselves to be sanctified by the very presence of God. Tonight I don't want, we don't need any music. I want to invite you for a few minutes with y'all. Would you say, God, this is the year that you scheduled. It's not about my agenda, but it's about yours. Sister Beth, you said it so well. Some of us may slide through this year and not have so much disappointment, but I'd say it's a far cry to think that all of us would escape any type of disappointment. But hey, live your life in such a sanctified way that you can say it may be my disappointment. But 
able to provide a problem with God. You know, I'm not going to get into a lot, but over the past couple of years in our family, we've had some pretty big disappointments. We've had some big loss. But I pray that in every loss, that there's a great gain of godliness that we can say that it's been a divine appointment for God to work. Take it that way. It becomes a tragic loss for us and God and eternity. So at the very